right, so this is welcome to our Expert Connect session. This is the one um, Expert Connect sessions. We, we did a lot of them early in the year, end of last year. Now we're, we're starting to back up. Summertime, a little bit of a lull. Uh, and we wanted to do this Expert Connect session and focus it in on marketing analytics. As you know, Expert sessions are all about talking deeper about careers in specific marketing disciplines. And um, in the TeamH community, you can find the ones we've done before. These will be recorded and posted there. Uh, but but today we want to talk about marketing analytics, careers in marketing analytics. And the, the format here, just for some housekeeping, we, we, we run about 45 minutes. Uh, we go through some information and, and Q&A with, with James, our guest here, to go into more detail about his background, examples, tips, etc. If you have a question, if a question comes up, uh, we recommend you to post that question into chat or to hold your question until we break out into Q&A. And then we'd love you to have love to have you ask your question either on audio or then we will refer to the questions in chat. That way we'll let James get to all his good content and then we'll tackle all the questions together. So that's how we're going to run the session. Um, so let's get started and welcome our guest, James Core. James, welcome to the Expert Connect. Thanks, Eric. Really appreciate it. Excited to be here. Yes. So uh, many may know James was a podcast host, uh, gosh, a couple years ago. Um, but I think maybe a lot, a lot or a little has changed, uh, or there have been some changes in the <laughs> marketing analytics uh, career landscape. So let's just start the conversation here. Let everyone get to know you a little bit more. Tell us about your background quickly on, on how you got into analytics and tell us about the role that you're in now and maybe the team that you're working with. Yeah, happy to. So I've spent um, just under eight years working in digital analytics and specifically web and app analytics. Um, all of that time has been set at Seer Interactive. So really wonderful team over at Seer and just have enjoyed my, my time there. I started out there um, as an analytics associate, which is an entry level position. Um, and I'll kind of I'll dive more into what exactly that means a little bit later, um, <clears throat> but worked my way into uh, an account manager role and then into a team lead role. And I am now the associate director of digital measurement solutions. So um, just to give a little bit more background and context as far as like what, what does that mean, right? Um, with the digital measurement solutions team or the DMS team for short, we focus on technical and infrastructure. So data collection on our clients' websites and apps. So, you know, helping our clients understand did somebody enter from, you know, the page with the red shirt or the blue shirt and tracking whether or not the page was about a red shirt or blue shirt to begin with, all of those sorts of things. So in a nutshell, it's aligning measurement to our clients' business goals and objectives and then eventually helping them make use of that data. So that's what we focus on. I oversee a couple teams uh, within the digital measurement solutions team, and we are a part of the analytics and insights division at SEER. This is one half of the division. The other half of the division uh, is called strategy and analytics or SNA for short, and they focus on activating the data. So using the data to turn that into insights. Um, so, you know, both the data that, that we provide through app and web measurement on our client sites, but also data sets outside that. So maybe census data or maybe data from various ad platforms or SERPs, search engine results pages like Google and Bing. Um, we monitor and track data from there and, and use all those things collectively to help our clients inform strategies and decisions. So there's, there's really kind of two halves to the analytics and insights division at SEER. Um, and I oversee one of those halves that focuses on really aligning business goals and objectives to the measurement for our clients. So that's a little bit about me, about SEER. Um, I'm happy to dive in in any aspect or, or pieces of that more, Eric. would love to hear where where you might want me to elaborate more. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think what's interesting and, and, and probably helpful for those here and those watching the recording would just be, you know, it sounds like you've taken the career path of really maximizing your time at one agency. So you started as entry level and now you've worked your way up to leadership. Uh, but I guess for those that maybe are interested in starting in marketing analytics, where were you before that mm. you got your opportunity to get into uh, the agency world uh, to start your analytics career? 
Yeah, great question. So uh, I went to Drexel University and uh, prior to my starting at SEER, I was basically a college graduate. So I had not where I have not worked at anywhere else. However, I have some other experiences um, due to my college experience. So at, at Drexel University, they have a co-op program, which essentially means you work for half the year and then you go to school for half the year and kind of do that back and forth uh, for a five-year program. So through that, I got exposed to a couple different areas. I thought I was going to go into finance and, and worked in a couple different places, one of them being Goldman Sachs and realized that this is not really the path that I wanted to pursue um, and made a, a, you know, a split from that essentially. And um, you know, one of the reasons why is Jed actually had uh, taught and proctored at uh, Drexel in one of the classes I was in, and, and he helped me realize that there is there's more to marketing than just like the sales and like advertising. There's you know many other facets and, and avenues of marketing, and one of them happens to be very numbers and data driven. Um, so knowing that was kind of like my interest, generally speaking, and I, I, I like business generally. Um, that's what drew me towards marketing and specifically analytics. How I found my way into an agency setting and SEER, um, again, Jed and, and others helped me realize that there, there's really kind of two ways you kind of break into marketing, generally speaking, client side and agency side. Um, for me, it wasn't necessarily about choosing one or the other. I just happened to look at the opportunities that I knew through my network and that I saw that were online and met with some various people that I knew through my network and, and probably, you know, people that, that we had through marketing help. Right. Um, so I would, I would highly endorse that. That is essentially more or less my network is how I found my first job at SEER. I met with somebody that worked at SEER. They told me about, Hey, it sounds like you might be interested in what we're doing based off of what you're telling me. They weren't coming to pitch me SEER or a job at the time, but, uh, it kind of worked out serendipitously like that. And, Ironically, um, they made a referral and I started on a Monday and they actually left. They ended up going to Google um, that Friday or like that the following Monday or something like that. So I, I didn't really even end up getting to work with them on the analytics team, ironically, but um, that was my, my foot in the door um, kind of helped through my network. So can't really emphasize the network piece enough. Sure. Yeah. And, and we'll touch more on, on that in a little bit. But, you know, when I heard you describe what you're doing currently at SEER, you know, based on knowing you from from when you landed your job to where you are now, maybe speak to what you've seen. Again, we're talking about marketing analytics as a career. What have you seen change? Maybe the trends that you've seen since, you know, when you started eight years ago to now, because I even heard just the way that you structure the agency is different than maybe mm -hmm. what it was eight years ago, even three years ago. But what are some of the trends you've seen tied to marketing, marketing analytics careers uh, in your time at SEER? Yeah, so I will circle back to kind of the agency type stuff and I'll dive into that in a second. But first talking about kind of the overarching shifts that I've seen. I think there's there's one big theme that I like to to talk about first and that's, you know, at the beginning of my career and through the first few years, um we've seen a lot of what, what the industry is moving towards one to one tracking. And what I mean by that is you know, when a user does this, we're going to track that, you know, individually speaking at the user level. So we know that user X4576 did this specific action, right? We were moving ever closer to tracking all of the things, track all the things all the time, and we'll analyze that, right? Um, and that was like the, the industry had been moving towards that for a while. Over the last few years, you know, in particular, starting with, you know, a big, big event of this or a big um, way for me to describe this is with the introduction of GDPR, um, a regulation in Europe that um, has kind of spidered out into the United States in, in various ways through what's now known as CCPA, the California Consumer Protection Act. Um, basically, it has changed the way that users and consumers think about their data and through legislation has changed the way that we're able to track users. So in Europe now, it's all consent driven. You have to get consent before you can track users in certain ways. Um, the United States is a little bit different. You just kind of provide a notice and you can still track people. Um, you can kind of opt out. It's an opt out system versus an opt in. So bringing us back here to the, the overarching theme that we're seeing um, for the, the at least the first half and probably a little bit more of my career and, and time working in, in analytics, it's been track all the things all the time, bring it together and use it to make business value. 
And now since then, since that kind of middle point, it's kind of started, the tide started to drift the other way. And it's not that we're not trying to track users in a meaningful way and their actions in a meaningful way, we are, but there's a greater emphasis on how that tracking occurs and how it can be tied to a specific user and their personal data. So knowing, um, you know, is that user this person in real life versus just knowing that it was the same unique user. Um, some things have shifted and changed. So one example I can give is, especially now in the last like one to two years, we're talking a lot more about um, observable versus not observable data. So in the past, tracking all the things all the time, everything was observable and you could, you could track things because it was known that a user did X or Y. Now we're seeing through legislation and through browser security updates and users opting out of tracking that the thing is still happening. The user still, you know, filling out the form or downloading the app, et cetera, but we're not able to directly track them. So it's not observable to us. So there's an introduction of a lot more model data and you know, using other statistical methods to determine whether or not you know, a user did something or not without actually directly observing them and saying like, oh yeah, I saw them do that thing. Let me increment this metric. Um, it's much more of a, okay, based off of these other user actions or based off of these other factors and, and things that we have at our disposal, we're going to statistically model out behavior and conversions that we're seeing. So given that those themes and those changes, do you, do you find that there's a need for those in the roles for marketing analytics that all of a sudden you need to brush up on a different set of skills or is it the, you know, cause I heard statistical modeling or, you know, we talk about machine learning, AI and all those things, but is there a, a hard skill that marketers interested in analytics career path need to be aware of or start brushing up on? That's a great question. Um, I would say there isn't necessarily, I, I don't want to say that there's necessarily a greater um, need for statistics background. That is not the case. Okay. Um, I would say actually that a, a, the way that technology um, is being intertwined with marketing, analytics, et cetera, it's making it easier to have less of a st statistics background and easier to use some of these tools, um, but it's a double-edged sword because understanding you know, generally how statistics work and models work and things like that is an important underlying skill set. So I would say no, simply because I believe that to be a, a kind of like a foundational skill that's worthwhile regardless of how the industry is operating or working, um, especially for, and I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on this more later, but depending upon where you want your career to go, Analytics is a very broad topic, right? There's many different avenues within analytics. One of them is, you know, data science, which has a very, very deep, you know, background in, in statistics and modeling and, and all of those sorts of things. So if you want to go down that path, like absolutely, there's definitely more of a, of a need for that. I would say it's a good foundational skill set for people to have that want to get into digital marketing, but I'm not sure that even the change in the industry warrant, um, you know, getting a degree in statistics, let's say more now than they did five or 10 years ago. Well, let's stick with that. Uh, I guess, you know, segueing into the, into the career paths that may exist. And I heard you say foundational skills. So in the example of, let's say somebody who, um, is maybe, you know, you, you 10 years ago, and the person 10 years ago that's interested in following a path into marketing and has, a, you know, a slight interest in numbers. Um, what are the, th what are the things you're suggesting those, you know, gain in terms of foundational skills, if they're looking to get into marketing, you know, whether it's a career switcher coming from HR finance, whatever, or someone right walking right out of school. Is it, is it Google analytics is a must or sorry, GA four is a must, or is it, uh, start br branching out as foundation? Cause I think it's different maybe now than it was 10 years ago where Google analytics knowledge is great, but maybe now it's definitely GA four and maybe another tool like Tableau or something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see an argument to be made that like uh, a data visualization tool like Tableau is, is definitely a critical part of the skill set now and even more so than it was five or 10 years ago. Um, I'm more than happy to talk about all the tools, but I would argue that 
for me, when I'm making hiring decisions and thinking about building out my team, um, I'm excited to hear that you may have experience in a specific tool or tool set, and that is absolutely part of the equation. But what's really most important to me is about critical thinking, problem solving. It's it's less about, you know, it's the way we'd like to think about it at Sear is it's less necessarily about a specific tool. And because I can train you on that tool, I can, I can help anybody learn Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager which are tools we use day in and day out, yep. Google Data Studio and Tableau, that's all great, but I can't teach you, it's much harder for me to teach you, you know, how to critically solve and think through a problem. So I would make the argument that it's important to think about, and as you get into marketing, to understand business fundamentals. So if we want to point to like some hard skills, some things that you could go look to learn more about, I think understanding fundamentally how a business operates is really important in marketing and specifically in analytics because you can measure everything under the sun and have great models and do all sorts of fancy stuff but if you don't have an understanding of how the business operates and you're able to provide value to the business it doesn't really matter what you measure what you collect what sort of fancy models and cool data visualization things that you have. So that's that's one skill set that I would say is broadly applicable to marketing, especially for analytics and, and digital analytics. Um, another one that I would follow that up with is data storytelling and communication of data. That is a critical, another skill set that I would argue is, is really top of, of mind for a broad kind of analytics focus and, and somebody that wants to get into analytics. Again, there, there's nuance to this. My role and the things that I do don't necessarily deal in a lot of data storytelling, but generally speaking, most analytics roles do. Um, and there's a lot of roles that involve analysis and, you know, working with Tableau and Google Data Studio. Um, just to kind of finish this thought off to give you some, some you know, if, you, if you're really curious about some uh, specific tools and products that I would recommend um, people learn, um, I would say Google Analytics 4 is definitely a good one to learn. It is because it's so broadly used, there are a lot of organizations, be it in-house or agency, that operate on analytics. And for those listening at home, Universal Analytics is the current Google Analytics code set. That is what's been used since about 2012. Um, Google introduced Google Analytics 4, or GA4 for short. Um, that is the next iteration of Google Analytics. So it is being Universal Analytics is being replaced with GA4. That is happening over the course of it started about a year ago and it'll go through the end of next year um, in, in 2023. So it's about the midpoint of 2023, Universal Analytics will stop collecting data altogether. Um, there's a little bit more nuance to it, but July 1 or October 1, it's going to stop collecting data. And at the end of next year, as of January 1, 2024, you'll no longer be able to collect or even open Universal Analytics at all. So GA4 is the future for anybody. Um, that is using UA today. Most of those people, the right choice is to move to GA4. Again, there's more nuance to it than that. It may or may not be the right tool, but that is a broadly applicable tool. Um, a couple others, Tableau is a great one, especially enterprise data visualization tool. Um, data Studio is a really, really accessible tool um, and is really helpful in a lot of different ways for visualizing data. It's free as well. Tableau has some free components too. Um, but data storytelling and, and um, can definitely get, get, get really a lot of value from Tableau and Data Studio and collection on the GA4 side. Outside of that, I would say SQL is another universally really usable skill and, and something that, again, pointing to like hard skills and things that like if you want to go take courses on um, and focus on like SQL is another good one that I would recommend for anybody who wants to find insights from data. Typically, there's a way that, that SQL is going to be involved in that, generally speaking. Got it. So that's a helpful list. And um, we can include those in the description of the video, just so those that want to research it more can find more of that information. Now, tying all this into the career paths that may exist, you know, as you're talking through these tools and how you use them, you know, and I think about some of the marketers we've been helping recently in our community that want that path in marketing analytics, there's a bit of anxiety or there's a bit of fear about thinking and, and, and trying to, uh, I guess, inaccurately think that if I get a job in marketing analytics, I'm just going to be the statistic modeling route. When you think about the paths in, in marketing analytics, uh, and I'm assuming here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a path that is that, you know, heavy statistics, 
modeling, you know, you go the, the route of working with all the, the machine learning and things like that. But then there's also, like you were saying earlier, there's a path where someone can be the one that tells the story from the data, which takes a little, maybe a little bit more creativity, a little bit more people interaction, because you're maybe talking to clients. You know, do I have that right in terms of the past? Maybe there's a third path for, for uh, careers in marketing analytics? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, a, again, a fair assumption, something that we hear from time to time, you know, in, in the people that I work with and clients. Um, so I'd say there, there's definitely, especially at the enterprise level, like a lot of need for statistics, modeling, data science, if you will, we can kind of put lots of those roles under data science. In addition to that, you have the um, analysis folks that focus on analysis. And, and like you mentioned, like data storytelling and communicating of data, those roles do definitely involve much more of the um, working with stakeholders to understand needs and, and presenting a lot of that. Um, data science, you definitely still do a lot of the stakeholder understanding and business needs assessment and providing models that can help support those things. Um, whereas in, you know, data visualization and analysis, you're probably doing a lot more presenting. You're still doing some of the stakeholder things as well. But um, I would add in addition to that, um, you know, there's business intelligence, which starts getting outside of purely marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but that is about um, bringing together disparate data sources to provide the business with insights. So going beyond maybe purely just marketing, but that is a common career path, both from analytics, digital analytics and to analytics. So that is another avenue that that folks can, you know, uh, endeavor into if if they're interested in analytics generally, business intelligence is another kind of more broad spectrum. So especially if somebody has spent their time, let's say, in um, maybe finance or accounting or something like that, um, very comfortable with numbers, um, BI is a really great way to start translating that because it'll have a lot of more general business background and it'll get you into kind of lots of the tools that we use in marketing analytics as well. Um, another one outside of the things that we've mentioned, there's also another avenue, uh, which is much more developer or, or, you know, technical focused more in the architecture and engineering side. Mm. So there is, you know, an avenue for um, computer science degrees and folks that are really interested in working in tools like Google Cloud Platform, AWS, um, or Amazon, um, and Azure, Microsoft's product. So there's definitely, you know, a broad spectrum again of, of, you know, those sorts of roles help facilitate the collection of data in a, in a huge, a scalable way across the organization um, that then downstream get turned into insights. So um, again, depending upon where you're coming from, what your skill sets are, um, there's other, you know, other avenues of analytics, like risk analytics as well, like financial analytics and um, people operations and, and, you know, HR analytics as well. So there's lots of ways to translate, again, if you spent time in other career paths um, to translate into and move into analytics and, and market analytics, if that's your end goal. Got it. And that, that does provide a nice overview of, of the different types of responsibilities that fall underneath uh, roles in this career. Uh, and and you know, now the trick is, you know, whenever you find a job description for one of these positions, it's, it, you know, deciphering it to see what, what they're actually looking for. Because uh, I'm sure the same job description for a uh, data, data analyst may require different responsibilities or different skill sets. Um, but you've captured a lot of what the key disciplines are for a marketing analytics mm -hmm. career path. Um, so, you know, what, what I'm thinking about, again, those that want to get started in this career path, you know, we talked about agency, we talked about in-house. I mean, if, in your opinion, you know, to, to, to get started in a path here, is agency the best route to go? So I don't know that there's a best path, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't want to characterize it as best. I think there are paths for that have different pros and cons. Um, and agencies provide a very different set of pros and cons than an in-house gig will, will provide. So, um, the way it was, you know, described to me at the beginning of my career, which I still find very useful and still describe to folks today is at an agency, you're going to work across many clients, right? You're going to work across many, many different clients in different industries, possibly, possibly all within the same industry, depending upon the agency and what they do and how they operate. Um, at Seer, we work, work across many different industries. We don't, we don't focus on a specific industry. So you might work on an e-commerce client today, a 
SaaS client tomorrow and a higher education client the next day or all on the same day. Um, so agencies generally have less learning about a given client um, and more exposure to many different challenges, some of which are the same, some of which are different. Uh, but you get exposure to a lot of different things across a lot of different um, clients, essentially. But you're kind of generally solving similar problems across them. It's just there's a different challenge or nuance with this one than there was last time. So from a foundational perspective, it's really good because you're learning how different businesses and different people operate at different businesses as well. It's not even just purely just the, um, you know, the business. It's, it's also working with different stakeholders at different businesses. Um, there's a nuance to that and learning that I think is definitely an undersold benefit of working at an agency. Um, agencies also, you know, really drive or are supposed to drive value. So I think rooting yourself in driving value is a key part of analytics. Because again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, if you're not able to provide value to the business, it doesn't really matter what else you're doing, what other fancy models and measurement that you have. Um, so I think an agency setting um, often lends itself to that because if we're not driving value, there's no point in the partnership and our client's gonna fire us um, and it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. Switching gears and talking more about on the client side, which again, you know, I, I haven't spent a lot of time in, right, to be clear. So I've spent majority of my career agency side, um, but in working client side, I have friends and, and have obviously spoke to many, many people. My understanding is you, you go a lot deeper into, you know, a, a very narrow set of problems. So you very intimately understand and know the business. Um, you're working on, you know, a, a singular set of problems um, versus say, you know, a, a, you know, many problems across many clients at a, at a much more shallow level. So it's great to develop expertise within a given discipline. I think um, coming out of the gates, if you're familiar with the direction that you want to go and confident in the direction that you want to go, for instance, data science is, is a good example of this where, um, deep expertise in a given field is really, really helpful in progressing in that field, which data science is one of them, um, because of the complexity of it. Um, I also think that, again, just using data science as an example here, um, in-house, you can learn and get mentored from um, leadership, um, especially from these deeper fields that take a lot of time and understanding. Um, you may benefit from kind of solving a, a more narrow set of problems and focusing on them and get more support from mentors in that sort of fashion. Um, agencies, you know, provide that as well, don't get me wrong, but generally speaking, I think you're gonna find probably more of that support out of the gate again for these deep technical areas um, in-house from my experience. Yeah, that's a good observation and, and a good kind of compare and contrast there because uh, and you've seen the agency world, you know, very intimately in terms of getting that exposure across different verticals, different problems. I like how you put that, you know, yes, different, uh, different problems across different verticals, whereas client side, it is, you know, you're right. It's, it's um, going deeper uh, across fewer things. Now let's, let's, let's shift here. And again, a couple more, one or two more questions here before I want to open up to our, our guests here to, to ask their questions, but let's go back to the, to the, to the entry point into a marketing um, analytics career. And that's the interview process. You, you, you kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but if anybody here is about to, or, or considering, or it gets into an interview specific to a role in analytics, your number one tip for them is what? On, on, on what to do in order to, you know, improve their chances tenfold for uh, making it to the next round? Mm. Great question. Um, number one, I would say like, at least at, again, my hiring experience is here. Everything is nuanced here, but for us, number one, I think we, we often think or hear from people like, oh, I'm hiring, I'm, I'm interviewing at Sear. Let me go read their blog and, and bring that up in the interview. And I'm not necessarily really concerned about that at all. So I wouldn't spend your time doing that. Number one, number two, uh, I would say for me, for an entry level position, I am not focused again on necessarily all the experience that you have in the tools. It's great to know that you have exposure to them, but I'm looking to, to hear about how you're going to navigate and, and figure out problems. So for me, it comes down to um, how can you display your critical thinking and problem solving? 
for us, that's, that's really big. Um, and just trying to display that in a way that will help me understand your thinking. Because again, it's, I, I can teach you Google Analytics for in, in time, right? I'm more interested in really seeing how you're going to solve a problem. And we're not, I'm not going to ask you some question like at Google where, you know, how many, how many gummy worms can fit in this jar? It's not about that. Um, so it's, it's less about that. It's more about um, if I ask you in an interview, well, how should you, how would you recommend we track this website or thing? It's starting with, okay, well, I know the business is, you know, uh, this is really important to the business. Like the number of forms that we get submit on a month is the opportunities that we have to turn those leads into some amount of deals. And I know that tracking those things is going to be important to the business. So again, it's nothing about, you know, knowing the nuances of Google analytics or the data layer or things like that. It's about translating and, and understanding this is important to the business and here's how I might approach a problem or something like that. So if, if I'm, if I'm somebody who's, who just heard your answer and I'm somebody who's about to uh, anticipate an interview for marketing analytics, based on what you said, my, my uh, reaction to that information is I'm going to create something that's going to give me a chance to showcase my critical thinking even if that's spinning up my own site to generate some data so I can then provide some analysis on it, or I'm going to identify, like you said at the end there, here's my approach when it comes to tackling any marketing analytics situation. And yeah. I, may have, I may have zero years of experience, but if I think through it, I've got four pillars of focus that I do. And if I bring those up in a conversation, that may connect uh, so someone could hear the critical thinking tied to how I would approach tracking measurement analysis, et cetera. Um, yeah. So in the interest of time here, just want to um, leave some room for questions, but is there anything just in wrapping this up? Is there anything we haven't talked about in the careers and marketing analytics that you want to address? Um, I would just emphasize kind of what you just mentioned there. So just, just to kind of wrap this up here on that last point, um, the, the everything that I mentioned is absolutely things we're looking for. Another thing really high on my list is taking action. So you took action in what you said there specifically because you said, I don't really have any experience, but I set up my own site and then I, I fixed some traffic and I used that and, and did all of these things, right? Like that is a home run, especially for somebody that may not have experience in analytics or specifically in what you're doing. Um, anybody can take a course and get a certification. That's great. That's awesome. I'm not going to discourage that. However, applying that in a meaningful or real way and taking that a step further is something that will, will really set you apart, I think, in the interview process. So again, it's you may beat out somebody that has two years of Google Analytics experience because you took the initiative and set up your own Wix site and got a little bit of traffic and set up Google Analytics and determined that like this was the sort of content that you need to build in the future or something like that. Well said, agree. All right, let's open open to questions. Uh, maybe Jed, if there's a question from the community, just to get it started. And, and then uh, Tanya or James, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to chat them or, or, or jump in audio. Sure, thanks, thanks James. This, uh, this has been a really great Expert Connect discussion. Um, one of the things that you were talking about earlier in terms of careers in marketing analytics um, and getting into marketing analytics. So it's one of the things that we talk about a lot in the community that you've probably heard on the podcast, Marketing Careers Podcast, is the concept of the T-shaped marketer um, and how having a broad understanding of a lot of different marketing disciplines and channels can be valuable, even at a shallow level, but then having a deep expertise in a specialism is really where you can, you know, accelerate your career. And then we talk about, you know, the, the fat T concept of you can start to stack complementary specialisms together as you get more experienced in the different uh, vertical parts of the T, right? The different specialisms. So, Talking about getting into analytics, that was a great part of the discussion. One of the questions in the community was, if you've got an understanding, even at a shallow level at the top of the T of marketing analytics and web analytics, can that help you in other areas if you wanted to explore other parts of marketing, whether it's marketing strategy or SEO, content, social, if there are other areas of marketing that 
you want to explore as your specialism, can learning more about marketing analytics and web analytics, even at a shallow level, help you? And, and if so, how? Yeah, great question. And yes, have heard those concepts both on the podcast and outside of them. Um, and that's kind of what I was getting at earlier. So we definitely agree with you and say that there is uh, value in just, yeah, even from a shallow perspective, um, having an understanding of, of analytics or digital analytics or Google analytics or those sorts of tools. Absolutely. And, and I would classify myself to some degree as, as someone who kind of fits that, that mold to some extent. Um, I have, you know, a deep expertise in digital web analytics um, and, and a broader understanding of search engine optimization and paid media and things like that, the other kind of service areas that that SEER operates in. But um, I do not have a deep understanding of them. I know enough to understand when and where it makes sense to pull in people that have a much deeper understanding than me. Um, I would completely agree that having some sort of understanding is going to benefit you a lot. It's going to be, you know, it's kind of like the 80-20 rule where sure, you're not going to be able to go in and prescribe a whole strategy or anything like that. It's not, that's not the case. But because you have an understanding, generally speaking, you're going to get a large portion of the value. You're going to get 80% of the value um, with, you know, a, a smaller amount of effort. So I would definitely argue that there's there's benefit to understanding that even from a, a shallow level, and that'll help you in, in other areas of measurement or marketing, especially because measurement is at the foundation of all other areas of marketing um, specifically. So, you know, if you if you want to know or invest in search engine optimization, if you're going to make an investment in it, whether that's a dollar to a million dollars, it's important to know, well, did I do it right? Did it work? What didn't work, right? Those things are important to understand whether we're talking about SEO, content, paid media, like you name it, like every every aspect of digital marketing comes back to, you know, is this working or not really is what it comes down to. Awesome. Thanks, James. Yeah. All right. Tanya, James, any questions from your side or, or based on your experiences or interests? Thinking, thinking, typing, maybe. Um, so if there's a question, maybe they're, they're thinking about their question, they want to ask James, here's a quick question for you. Uh, I know this is, a, it depends, but uh, just try to try to quantify starting salaries for analytics positions. Um, I know it depends on where you live, but if you had to give like a, Above average, forty-five thousand being the base, you know, entry-level positions in analytics, typically above or below. Um, I would say probably slightly above that. Of course, yeah. To your to your point, it all depends where you live, what sort of organization. Um, but I would say slightly above that for entry level, um, depending upon where you're talking about. Um, I would also say that generally speaking. Um, agencies are going to have a slightly lower, their bands are going to be a little bit lower in terms of, of salary, um, and in-house is going to be generally a little bit higher. Um, again, depends on the role, the agency, all sorts of factors, but generally speaking, that is kind of known to be true within marketing that generally agencies have a, a lower ban, um, and in-house can pay a little bit more. Um, it's also generally speaking, um, a little bit more challenging to, to find a role or a job in in-house generally it's more you know, have a few years of experience um, sort of deal so an entry-level position might be a little bit more challenging to come by in, in in-house um, as well so yeah fair enough um, yeah yeah another another question just while we're um open forum um so james if you're let's say first three to five years of your career and you're in a marketing analyst or marketing analytics role outside of the work itself, where would you recommend that person spend some time or, or who with getting to know, you know, whether your agency side or, or client side, um, who should you be spending more time with if a, you want to do your work better, you know, you're outside of the work, you're building relationships who do you want to be spending time with and, and who, what, what's a good use of time if you want to accelerate your career? What kinds of relationships are really important? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think there's a kind of a, uh, you know, there, there's, there's two paths, so to speak here that I think make a difference in terms of my answer. So there is uh, what we'll call an individual contributor or an IC path. So those are people that generally work to provide, you know, insights, data, infrastructure, technical, et cetera. Um, I think it'll make more sense when I say the other path, which is people management. So that is managing the work of others. So generally speaking, again, just to summarize that you've kind of got two paths as you look upward in a career um, in marketing and, and analytics in particular, um, you've got a path to manage people, manage teams, et cetera. And then you've got an individual contributor path. So if you are going down the path of um, individual contributor, then it probably makes more sense to focus on your subject matter area of expertise and working with leaders, mentors in that area and you know, tangentially related to that area. So for instance, again, going back to the, the data science example we talked about earlier, um, spend time with the higher ups above you in data science, it's kind of a no brainer. But outside of that, I'd also recommend talking to both ends of, of the other side of kind of what's, what's closely related to data science. And that is one side is kind of the business end of side. So data science exists to help run the business better and provide you know, value. So it's important for you to spend time with the end users of your models, of your you know, analysis, those sorts of things. So I would say building relationships with um, people that are owning various aspects of the business. Maybe that is you know, people in finance, maybe that's people in operations, uh, maybe that's other general people in marketing as well. So the consumers of what you're producing, I think, is is a good way to say that. Um, and then on the flip side, the other side of, of kind of the tangentially related to data science, I would say is, again, depending upon where your interest lies, um, spending time with developers and infrastructure and technical side of things. So um, understanding how some of the technical and infrastructure works could help you in your data science day to day um, in that you have a better understanding um, and you know vernacular and ability to communicate to developers to help them understand your needs to help facilitate what the business needs that sort of thing so you know devops um, those sorts of people might be good to to hang around spend some time with engineering especially if, if there are is a you know data engineering team um, even some of the you know business intelligence kind of spans to some degree, both of those things that I mentioned before. So those would be good people to spend time with. Again, just as an example, data science. Um, from the people management side of things, I think it's it, it's more broad in that like spending time with leaders that are um, in, in similar roles or roles that you wanna be in um, that manage other teams that, that you could see yourself managing. So maybe that's another technical team. Um, so that's maybe, you know, spending time with a team lead of a DevOps team versus spending time with the, you know, DevOps people themselves. Um, so I would, I would encourage, you know, that person to make connections with people that are managing people um, that is both newer managers, but also, you know, people that, um, you know, maybe oversee teams that oversee teams, things like that too, um, in, in a variety of ways. Of course, there's, there's many different people that do that, but it's, you know, more nuanced when you get down to like, well, should I meet with the the manager of marketing or the manager of you know finance or something like that? Like they're both managing teams, but I'm not sure which direction I want to go. Um, it's more nuanced than that. So I'd say just the the, the skills are what you probably want to focus on for people management. Really, really great advice. Yeah, I mean, co the consumers of your data, your analysis, the insights, spending time with them is only going to make work better right that makes, mm -hmm. makes perfect sense thanks james yeah all right well i mean i think a lot of good content covered here and again because we were recording this will be accessible um via the community so we'll make sure we'll alert everyone when that's been posted last call any questions tanya or james now that we have we have james core here to answer any questions okay if, if there's none um hopefully You've had a chance to connect with James on LinkedIn. That'd be a great way to stay connected with James if you have any questions moving forward about a career in marketing analytics or just, you know, you come across something in your day to day and maybe you need a sounding board or a quick uh, answer. You haven't, you now have an expert in your network. Uh, so take advantage of that connection, uh, connect with James and LinkedIn. 
Otherwise, I'll, I want to thank Tanya and James for joining us today to talk about this. I want to thank our guest, James Core for joining us out of your busy schedule to give us time to talk about careers in market analytics. So thank you very much, James, and uh, best of luck in the move. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a joy to talk with you guys today um, about all things analytics. Um, Sear does have some roles open for digital analytics. If that's interesting to you, please check out our website. We've got them all posted there on our job board. Obviously, I'm a bit biased there, but um, yeah, check them out. And just to emphasize, Eric, what you said there, if um, if you're considering a career in, in marketing analytics or analytics in general, um, I'm more than happy to to chat with anybody um, via LinkedIn, email, you know, grab a virtual coffee, whatever it may be, happy to uh, provide some time and, and, and help answer any questions I, I may be able to. Perfect. Great, great stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely second, you know, if anyone's even interested to see what sort of roles exist in marketing analytics, go to see or check out the careers, um, you know, insightful stuff there to see how they're positioning their teams to address marketing analytics. Mm-hmm. All right. Good stuff. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you on a future Expert Connect. Mm-hmm.